So I haven't done a video um, for a few days now and I thought I would use the tarot cards to illustrate, demonstrate why I haven't been uploading videos. So I need to point out at this point this is not a reading. Uh, I have consciously chosen the cards to reflect my experiences. So the main reason um, <clears throat> that I haven't been uploading videos is because I haven't felt very well. The five of pentacles, yes, it's often associated with lack of money, but it can be lack of energy as well. It's a physical card, so it can indicate physical illness, particularly when associated, when paired with the four of swords, which is that need for rest. So I've definitely been, I've had a couple of viruses back to back and I've needed to rest more. It's left me feeling quite overwhelmed and exhausted. The problem with being self-employed and a single mum um, is that there's not a lot of wiggle room. So I've had to manage my time really carefully because I have definitely needed a lot more rest and some things have just had to be cut. And um, YouTube and social media were the two of the things that I cut, basically. Um, to allow myself to rest and recover a little better from feeling quite unwell over the last three weeks. I also um, had an opportunity to get away for a long day in London to meet um, the word that I would use is Anam Kara, the Druid friend for a soul friend. Um, she's actually someone that I I refer to in my book, I think, for the Two of Cups as well, Soul Friend. We haven't seen each other for about two years. Life gets busy. We live quite a way away. So that was a long day. It was a wonderful day. Um, but in my life, to spend a day with no parenting, no housework and no work is really rare. So it was well worth doing, but it definitely pushed back all of my schedules. Another thing I've been doing um, is playing the role of mum a bit more. Uh, oh, just managed to knock my uh, tripod. Four of Wands can often be party, celebration, can be a wedding, can be a christening. In this, this case, it's birthday. I have two birthdays in May, um, which is really, really nice. Um, my youngest is 14. My second uh, child will be 16 very very soon so having the double birthdays really does take up quite a lot of my time i'm also um more in mum mode at the moment because my eldest who is 19 is uh, off to america at the end of may for four months this will be the first time any of my children have left me for longer than four days i think so it's bit of a shock to the system and obviously I'm doing my best to support her and parent her as she prepares to leave home to travel to America for four months and I am really really excited for her but that has taken up more of my time. Add into the mix as well um, the hanged man the Hanged Man to me, uh, if I'm reading for myself, not necessarily if I'm reading for anyone else, definitely re represents Odin. Odin hung himself upon the world tree to receive the gifts of the runes. And to me, the Hanged Man can often represent um, shamanics or shamanism. It doesn't have to. It was actually the single card that really stuck around for COVID. Um, <clears throat> the beginning of COVID year, I do year ahead readings by email email I've got clients that have had the, that books this for years now and it was really weird that the four the four of cups and the hanged man were consistent cards in just about everybody's readings and I found myself saying time and time again everything looks fine it just slows down of course now I know it was lockdown so yes the hanged man can just mean slowing down it can mean looking at things from a different perspective but it can also represent shamanic work and for me definitely the Nordic shamanic work so I had a wonderful full day um, workshop with some of my really regular students uh, I haven't done that for quite a while I used to do an in-person workshop on a weekend every month um, and then basically 
COVID, being a single mum, suddenly it just wasn't quite as easy to have a whole day away from the family. So it was really nice to have that day. Also, I'm going to use the hanged man to represent. I am teaching a rune law course, an introduction to the runes by Zoom. It's May 22nd, 23rd, round about then. And I have set myself the handy target of writing an ebook covering all 16 runes of the Younger Futhark and how they can be used for rune reading, energy healing and um, shamanic or psychic work for this workshop. It seemed like a really good target at the time and I'm really excited by it. It will be the foundation for a full book. But obviously with, um, with all of this going on, with illnesses and birthdays and children traveling, it just was an added pressure that on reflection I probably wouldn't have given myself. But I'm nearly done now and I'm really pleased with it. So that's why I haven't um, been uploading videos. I just had to cut um, back a little bit somewhere. But it's nice to be back. Um, I'm just shuffling all of those back and let's ask because I, I feel one of the best ways to teach tarot is to demonstrate real readings because the problem is if you're learning tarot <clears throat> you're probably almost exclusively reading for yourself or maybe people that you know and you don't get to see different readings so I'm just going to ask I'm teaching tarot tonight and I'm doing shadow work and one of the key things about shadow work is it's leaving space in a reading for what you wouldn't necessarily ask about. Because so often we ask the cards, how do I do this? How do I do that? When will he come back? When will I get the job? Will I, will this, will that? And we're asking, it's very easy to get caught up. Believe me, I do it as well. Should I do this? Should I do that? And we're not, we're not leaving space for what we don't know. And so asking the tarot, what do I need to know right now, is probably one of the most powerful questions you can ask. So I've shuffled the deck and I've really thought about that. I just like to cut and put the deck back together. For me, that is a moment of focus. It's like a punctuation mark, if you like. And let's have a look. I know what my stalker cards are. Um, it's really useful if you read for yourself quite a lot. You'll get a feel. You'll go through a period of your life where you get all very similar cards. One of the things that fascinates me is when I read for people that read for themselves, they often go, oh, God, that's the card I keep getting. It'll be the first or the last card, or I'll get it in every spread for them. And Bingo! There's my stalker card. <laughs> the Nine of Swords. Um, who knows? Once I work out why I'm getting the Nine of Swords, then I guess it will dissipate again. Thank goodness. I think I'm anxious. My daughter's off to America. Uh, we rent in the UK and our house has got quite a few problems to it. Leaking roof and no damp proof course and plumbing that isn't reliable and that makes me anxious um i'm also booking my first ever proper holiday with my three children will be left at home and that's making me anxious um i'm anxious about how to use my investments basically and by that i don't mean you know stocks and shares i'm not in that kind of position but my time my expertise the money that i have coming in I'm not sure how to maximise or best use use my resources. The Seven of Pentacles. I'm confused about that. And yeah, another stalker card. Aren't live readings lovely? I am coming out. I am hopefully coming out of what's been a very difficult and traumatic time. And I am anxious that it will be repeated. The Nine of, the nine of Swords is overthinking. The Nine of Wands can be fear that the past will repeat itself and so I probably am being more cautious overworking underspending 
being more cautious, cautious than I need to be because I'm anxious about things going wrong again. It's always good to turn the pack upside down and have a look at the card at the bottom. I like to call this the doorstep card. It's the card that adds a dimension to the reading that maybe you wouldn't have thought about. It's often a card that kind of brings everything together. Temperance is balance. To temper something is to, to water it down. To temper steel, we heat it, we bash it, we cool it. It's about getting the balance of ingredients right. This would say that not to be too flippant with my time, resources and money, but also not to be too anxious either, to enjoy as well. So it's been interesting um, to sort of share a live reading. And hopefully now that I'm on the mend and at least one of the two birthdays is over, um, I will be able to be back and sharing a few more videos again. <laughs>